Wednesday War College. Just remember, Dan Schneider, we're talking about uh, <clears throat> Megan Fox and her Machine Gun Kelly and their blasphemous mimics and parody of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, they're both Satanist. I've, I've seen them on a different website where they admitted this. So we're not just talking, we're talking about actors, not only who are malformed, have a malformed, deformed moral conscience, but they're also actors who are Satanists and they have a huge footprint with young people, especially. And these, uh, these, these two, uh, um, Satanists drink each other's blood. It's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes. Dan, I'm looking at this one, uh, this one Protestant occult expert and author, Bill Schnobelin. He says, and th this, this seems to be, it seems to track with, with, with what I've read. He says, uh, for the occultists, for witches, human blood was believed to open the gates of Anawin. Anawin is, aim, is Welsh for the other world. So human blood was believed to open the gates of the other world and release the spirits for a night. So, uh, yeah, so this practice about drinking each other's human blood, this, uh, this has deep occult ties. And again, uh, it's, just, it's just a mockery of the only blood that can save is Jesus Christ and the Holy Eucharist, not your, not your neighbor's blood. There's only one blood that opens the true gates to the true other world and the world that we were created for, which is the heavenly realm. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. In, in Hebrews, it says he passes through a greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, not belonging to this creation. He enters for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood, attain, thus attaining eternal redemption. And goes on this long explanation, but says in, in Hebrews 9.22, um, according to the law, almost everything is purified by blood and without the shedding of blood forgiveness and so it's through the splitting of shedding of blood um that in christ offering of himself as the paschal sacrifice and uh if we have more time we can go into the gospel of john and where john presents jesus as king as ruler you know uh he he's wearing purple he's sitting on the you know he seats himself on the judgment seat you could read instead of Pilate sat him it could say he sat jesus on the judgment seat and jesus judges the world and he bears the cross, and there's no mention of Simon of Cyrene helping him bear the cross. He bears it himself. Uh, um, the, the, the three languages of the known world, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, um, Jesus, King of the Jews, right? So the whole discussion with Pilate about kingship, all these things point to Christ as king, and it's through the cross and the shedding of his blood that uh, uh, that that he conquers the evil one. And so the evil one is constantly going to try to distort everything that is true and beautiful and good. And so this is just a direct, the, the use of blood is just a direct mockery of the sacrifice of Christ. Hebrews 9.22 opens up our understanding of the power of the blood. For without blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Uh, and this is exactly why, by the way, Dan, if you remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ, uh, when Jesus dies on the cross, the cameras pan over to the devil who's transgender. You can't tell if he's male or female. And I think Mel Gibson did that on purpose. They, the, the camera pans over to the devil and the devil screams. Yeah. Now, why is the devil screaming when he sees Jesus Christ dying on the cross? To me, he's, cry, he's screaming because <laughs> he wasn't sure up until that point if that was, if that was Jesus, the son of God, the Messiah. Uh, but at that point, it became very clear to him that when he shed his blood, there was forgiveness of sins. And he realized that he was, as Dr. Peter Crave says, Calvary is judo. Uh, God, judo is the martial arts where you take your person's, the, your opponent's body weight and their inertia as they're coming at you and you throw them. This is what Christ, Dr. Crave says, this is what Christ did on Calvary to the devil. He used his plan against him to throw him. Uh, again, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. The devil saw this and he says, I've been duped. I've been fooled. Uh, now with the, with the shedding of his blood, there is forgiveness of sins. There is redemption. And, uh, and this is again, why he screamed because he realized that, uh, that he had convinced the Jews and the Romans to kill this uh, would be Messiah but instead, he was playing into God's plan of salvation history. 
Yeah, yeah. If uh, the uh, the early ch- early church father Saint Ignatius of Antioch, who was a who was a disciple of John the Apostle himself, um, actually was martyred on his way to Rome. Uh, to be martyred and thrown to the lions, he wrote seven letters to seven churches. Some of those churches, the ones that are represented in the book of Revelation. Um, he he had a beautiful say, st- statement talking about the things that were hidden from the devil, one of them being the incarnation, what he calls three whispers of a cry wrought in the silence of God. And so that that is an early, I mean, this is, he's writ, wrote you know, John, the beloved disciple, is still alive at this time, and so uh, that 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 mystical and, and artistic depiction uh, from from Jim Caviezel is is I think consistent with that ancient tradition that the devil did the devil really really know? He even said, "If you are when he tempted Jesus, if you are the Son of God, right? If you are the Son of God, show yourself, show yourself through your power." And and so Jesus says, "I'll I'll, I'll show you myself in my power on the cross, the ultimate the ultimate judo." Um, I have a I have a friend who's a, a, a good friend who's an exorcist, and he's also a, a judo artist and a black belt. And he said they had this thing called the. And again, you and I are strikers, right? You were a kickboxer, yeah, and I was yeah. a boxer. The judo guys, they, they, those guys are a different breed. The the, yep. the grapplers, you know. And so they have this move. They call it the can can. And and you get you get your opponent on your hip, but you use the you, you use his body position against yours and his weight that he can only keep one foot on the ground. And they call it the can can because that was an old dance back in the 40s. And so you you basically dance him one leg hopping around the ring and he knows it's just inevitable. It's just a matter of time before you flip him over your hip and he's looking up at the lights. And so this is this is this is what what Jesus does on the cross. He does the ultimate can can. He does the ultimate body slam. He does the ultimate judo move. And taps the enemy out, and so. Um, but it was something that was. Who could have imagined? Who could have imagined God become man? So anyway, that's just right. an early witness to it. That that's kind of consistent with what, what Dr. Peter Kreef says. Right. Yeah. Saint Paul. I think he 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 makes the case very strong in First Corinthians two eight. Saint Paul says, "None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had." they would not have crucified the Lord yeah. of glory. Yeah, right. you talk, the rulers of the sage, every commentary that I looked at, they're saying this is Satan and his minions. These are demons. This is a reference to the, the spirit world. So I'll read it again. First Corinthians 2, 8. None of the rulers of this age, and this is a reference to demons, understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What is it that they didn't understand? They didn't realize if this is Christ and we in the son of God and we kill him. Guess what? The shedding of his blood is going to uh, is going to be the forgiveness of sins. And we're going to play right into it. And so uh, this is uh, again, Peter Crave. Calvary is judo. He says this, the enemy's own power is used to defeat him. Satan's ends, Good Friday, was God's means to save the world Easter Sunday. Mm. Also something else, Dan, about blood. I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence that that we're saved by the blood of Jesus, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You know, going back to that uh, verse in Leviticus, uh, I forget where it's at in Leviticus, where it says, um, the life, uh, the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. It's, it, yeah. I think it's Leviticus chapter 17. Here's something very interesting. And my, my wife has told me this for years. My wife was a registered nurse for many years, but she told me, uh, my wife said, the reason I think that blood is, is used uh, on a supernatural level to save us, the, the blood of Christ is because on a natural level, you know, this red plasma that we call blood with these red and white blood cells that circulate through the heart and the arteries. My wife says blood is a body tissue that carries oxygen to the brain. It carries oxygen to the relevant parts of the body and blood also takes the carbon dioxide and the waste matter away from the body tissues. In other words, when you use a toilet, that's because the blood is getting all the toxins out of your body and blood also. So that's, that's the defensive 
part of blood. The offensive part of blood is that as it flows through your veins, it carries oxygen to all the relevant parts of your brain that need oxygen. So it's not a coincidence that because blood affects life in the body, it's not a coincidence that God would use blood now on a supernatural level to af- to affect life to the soul, but it has to be the blood of Jesus, not the blood of, of Megan Fox or the, or, the, or the blood of Machine Gun Kelly. Stay right there in Leviticus. You, you see the power of the blood and you look at the two elements of, of this depraved world, the things that we sh- that we not even worth speaking of apart from just revealing the, 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 the works of darkness. Right after that segment on the sacredness of blood is the sacredness of sex, right? And so mm-hmm. in Leviticus 18, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and tell them, I, the Lord, am your God. You shall not do what they do in the land of Egypt where you once lived. You shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan. As I'm bringing bringing you to, nor conform to their customs, right? And what are their customs? Uh, uh, um, you shall not have approached close relations or have sexual intercourse with a close relative, intercourse with your mother, etc. Incest. Uh, and so, part of the ritualistic practices of these ancient religions was ritualistic sex. And so, we see Megan Fox talks about the use of blood ritualistically, and there will be a sexual element to it as well, because this is this is this is part of the the the, the pagan uh, um, view of the world, misconstruing and mis and, and distorting um, true religion. And so, and um, don't lie with a male as with a woman, et cetera. So the sacredness of, of sexuality, so the shedding of blood and sexuality are two areas that are, are very, very uh, um, uh, central um, to, to, to the pagan worship and, the, and in satanic worship. But also these are things that are central to us. Right. The, the uh, you know, this, the, the, the precious blood of Jesus was born in a virginal uh, shed from a virginal body, the sacredness of sex, but also the denouncing for the sake of the kingdom living in, in this this eschatological reality. Right. As 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 a soul in heaven that offers not only their bodies, but their actual the, the their fecundity, their physical fecundity is now offered to God so that it may be converted into a spiritual fecundity. And so this power of the generative principle is also another area that is grossly distorted, savagely restored, re- distorted uh, by, t- by today's world.